Hey gang, using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, one word, all caps, will get you 10% off orders of $10 or more at Flipside Gaming, Original Magic Art, and orders of singles at Multizone. If they don't have what you're looking for, you could check out TCG Player and use my affiliate link to help support the channel. Looking for a way to bling out your deck and not spend a fortune? Alter Sleeves can help with that, and you can help with the channel at the same time by using my affiliate link. Or, if you're looking to join the Goblin Gang, you can always support me through Patreon. Hey gang, just so you should know, Multizone is giving you the chance to win $100 in store credit. All you have to do to enter to win is use my promo code on an eligible order during the time period of February 15th, 2021 to March 1st, 2021, and you'll be entered to win. It's one entry per household, so good luck and have fun. Hey gang and welcome back. Today's game has some brand spanking new commanders, and I forgot to record the opening hands, so let's just get right into it. Martin wins the die roll and starts us off. Martin plays a tapped prairie stream. I play a tapped overgrown tomb. Nick plays a swamp. Max plays a spectator seating as his land for turn, passing. Martin draws and plays an Atacar Wastes. He then pays two for a Sword of the Anime. I play a Tainted Woods and cast a Devoted Druid. Nick plays a Swamp, casting Bitter Blossom. Max plays a Mountain, and he pays two for a Selesnia Signet. Martin plays an Island for turn, and out comes Glenn, the Voice of Calm. I play a tapped Opulent Palace, passing. Nick gains a Fairy Rogue on his upkeep and loses one to Bitter Blossom. He then draws her turn and plays a Swamp. Two mana gets him a Jet Medallion, and he passes turn. Max casts three visits in his main phase and goes to find a Temple Garden. He has it come in untapped, taking two, and then casts an Oakum Adversary for a discounted cost, and he passes to Martin. Martin draws and plays a Skycloud Expanse. He equips Glenn with the Sword of the Anime and goes at me. He gets an on attack trigger and goes into his library to find a basic. I then take two commander damage, and Martin then draws two from Glenn's on damage trigger. In his second main phase, he casts a dousing dagger, and I get the plant tokens as it enters. I draw, and play a tapped lumbering falls. Four mana then gets me a master biomancer, and I pass to Nick. Nick loses one life and gets a fairy token, and in his main phase plays a swamp. Three mana gets him the discounted Kalatus because of the gem medallion, and he passes to Max. Max draws and goes to combat. He hits Martin for two with the adversary and draws a card. We then see a Timber Crown pathway coming in. Max then casts Jared, and as his commander enters, makes Nick the monarch. He then plays Key to the City and passes turn. Martin plays a Plains, and we see an Arden coming in. Three mana then gets him a Fire Shrieker, and Martin then moves to combat. This has Arden triggering, and lets him gear up Glenn with all of his remaining equipment, and he then swings his commander at Max. Max blocks with Jared, while Martin has gone into his library to find a basic from swinging, and with nothing else, Martin passes. I play a breeding pool, taking two so it comes in untapped. I cast a generous patron, and Nick checks if he gets a zombie token from Calatus, and we're pretty sure he does from seeing Jared die. My patron comes in and gets two plus one plus one counters from my Biomancer, and then puts a counter on Calatus and the zombie token, thanks to support. Since they're creatures I don't control, I get to draw two cards from the patron's other trigger. I then cast the Ozolith and pass. Nick loses one to Bitter Blossoms, gains a fairy, and draws. He plays Thespian Stage and brings out Kesket in his main phase. We then see a Wayfarer's Bobble, which Nick sacrifices and searches for his basic and announces he'll draw after he's done shuffling, passing turn. Max's main phase has Marisi, Breaker of the Coil, come in, and he goes to combat. He swings the Oakum Adversary again at Martin, dealing two. He draws a card, and Martin creatures are now goaded. Max then plays a Sunpetal Grove and passes to Martin. Martin plays a Plains and casts Steel of the Godhead, targeting Klen. I respond with delay, suspending the aura, basically. Moving to combat, Martin has to swing both creatures, and Arden is headed at me and Glenn goes at Nick. Martin gets to go and find a basic, 
while Nick blocks Kalen with a token, and I block Arden with the generous patron. With Arden dying, she gets exiled to Calatus, and Nick gains a zombie token. In his second main phase, Martin casts Padim, and then passes to me. I play a forest, and cast Volrath in my main phase. He comes in with two plus one plus one counters, and I then move to combat. I put the minus one minus one counter Volrath puts out onto Glen, and I draw from the generous patron. I then move through my second main phase, and pass turn. Nick loses one again, gains a fairy, and then draws for turn. He plays a swamp for turn, and casts the other half of his partners, Nadir. Nick then goes to combat, swinging Calatus at Martin, and dealing four while gaining four. He passes, and draws at the end of turn. Max draws, and goes to combat as well. He swings Marisi at Martin, and the adversary at Nick. He activates his key, discarding Aurelia, to make the Oakum unblockable. Martin blocks with Patim, and Nick takes two, with Max becoming the Monarch, and drawing from the adversary trigger. His Monarch token looks remarkably familiar, however, and once that's all done, Max then casts a Sunbird's Invocation, and passes. Martin casts a Sword of Vengeance, and gears up Glen. Max threatens Martin with a bad time if he swings at him, and Glenn decides and Martin decides to swing Glenn at Max because he doesn't respond well to threats, and he gets to find a basic from the Sword of the Anime trigger. He deals five first from the double strike damage, drawing five cards. He then deals only three, because his dousing dagger is transformed after the first hit, and deals three more commander damage, drawing three more cards. Martin then plays a planes for turn, and he casts a Leonin Shikiri, and then an Umazawa's Jite. He then draws at the end of turn from being the Monarch, and passes, discarding down to 7. My turn has me going at max with Volrath, and before moving to damage, I activate my commander's ability to become a copy of Glen. He then deals 9 damage, and I draw 9 cards. I play an Urborg as my land for turn in my second main phase, and float a green mana with the Devoted Druid before untapping it with his own ability by putting a minus 1 minus 1 counter onto it. I then tap it again for another green, and tap all of my lands for Genesis Wave where X is 6. Martin responds once he gains priority, flashing out Venser to bounce it back to my hand. I then discard down to 7, and at the end of my turn, Nick sacrifices 3 tokens to Keskit, and looks at his top 3 cards. He gets to keep 2 of them, and bins 1. Nadir also gains 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters from seeing the tokens die. Nick loses 1 to the Bitter Blossom, making a token, and then moves to his draw step, drawing for turn. He plays Nykthos as his land for turn, and activates it for 5. Three mana is used to cast an Ashnod's Altar, and Nick sacrifices a token to make two colorless, and this gives Nadir another counter. He casts a Loxod on Warhammer, and Nick then gears up Nadir by sacrificing a zombie token and making mana, plus giving him another counter. Nick then sacrifices another zombie to make more mana, and this is used to help cast a Mere Battle Sphere. As this comes in, it makes four Mere tokens. Nick then has Keskit sacrifice three more artifacts or creatures and Nick keeps two of his top three cards, plus gives Nadir more counters. Another zombie goes for mana, and we then see a Lashwrith. He loses some life paying the Phyrexian mana cost to equip the Lashwrith onto Nadir, and gains another counter on his commander as a germ token it comes in with dies. He then sacrifices the last zombie for mana, and we see a Skull Clamp come out, and he sticks it onto his commander. Moving to combat, Nadir goes at me for 26. I block with my patron, and a plant token, taking only 19 commander damage, and Nick gains some life. With the patron dying, she's exiled because of Calatus, and Nick makes another token, and then passes turn. Max untaps, and draws as he pays for the untap trigger from Key to the City. He then draws for turn. Max then makes the adversary unblockable again, and swings it at Nick. Nick takes the two, and Max draws a card. In his post-combat main phase, Max then casts a Blasphemous Act to try and wipe the board. He gets a Sunbird's Invocation trigger, and casts Beast Within to take out Nick's Ashnod's Altar. The board is then wiped, and Nadir is the only survivor. On the plus side, I get to move the counters on my stuff over onto the Ozolith. Nick also gains a few zombie tokens from Calatus seeing everything die at the same time. Max then plays out a Ghostly Prison, and then gets a Soul Ring from the Sunbird's trigger. We then see an Orzov Advocus from his hand, 
and Max's sunburn trigger hits Arc Bond, targeting the Advocate. It doesn't really do anything, and he then passes to Martin. Martin draws and plays a flooded strand. He cracks it, taking one to find a Chandra, and then taps enough to cast Time Wipe. This wipes the board, as Nick is counting up just how many elves he should get from Nadir as he dies. Nick also draws two from his commander dying, and puts Nadir to the yard. Martin then plays it a dark steel plate, and gears it up onto the newly cast Danatha. We then see a Keeper of the Accord, and Martin draws at the end of turn from Monarch, passing. I play an island for turn, and tap five for a Seedborn Muse. Cold Eye Selkie then joins the party, and I move to combat, moving the counters onto the Selkie, and then passing turn. Nick untaps, and loses one to make a fairy token to join his 26 elf tokens. He plays a swamp, and I remember to untap with Nick. Nick then casts a Victimize, sacrificing an elf token, and brings back a Tap Nadir and a Mere Battlesphere. He makes four Mere tokens as the Battlesphere enters. Moving to combat, he swings 20 elf tokens at me. I activate my Lumbering Falls to help block three, but still get taken out. In his second main phase, Nick casts a Spine of Ishsa, which enters and blows up Max's Sunbird's Invocation. Nick then passes, and at the end of turn, Martin makes a 1-1 Soldier token from the Keeper of the Accords end of turn trigger. Max pays 2 as the key untaps to draw from it, and then draws from turn. He plays a Mana Confluence, and then casts a 3-drop Vivian. He downtakes her by 2, and exiles one of the top 3 cards from his library face down. Martin's upkeep has him removing the last counter from his delayed Steel of the Godhead, which he puts onto his Keeper of the Accord. He then plays Glenn in his main phase, and begins to gear up all of his commander once more. Martin then casts a Talisman of Progress, before playing out an Angelic Destiny onto Glenn. Moving to combat, he goes at Nick. Nick blocks Glenn with the Fairy Token, and gives Nadir more counters. Martin gains some life from this as well, and then draws from Glenn's trigger. While he's doing this, Max takes the chance to flash out Jared, and gives Martin the Monarch despite him having taken it just from Nick. Martin then plays a Reliquary Tower as his land drop, and passes, drawing to the end of turn from being the Monarch. Nick loses one to Bitter Blossom, and gets a Fairy token. He clams the Fairy, drawing two, and gives Nadir another counter. Nick then clamps an Elf, draws two, and gives his commander another counter. He's drawn a lot of lands, and clamps another one, doing the same as before. He's finally drawn into something, and he casts a Vampiric Tutor, and loses two life. Once the card is on the top, Nick clamps another token to draw two, and Nadir is getting bigger and bigger. We then see Nick resolve a Mutilate, which will give all creatures minus eight minus eight until end of turn. Nadir gets even bigger this way, and he's also made the way clearer. Nick then pays 4 life to gear up Nadir with the Lash Wraith again, and he swings to take up Martin. Nick then draws at the end of turn, he then moves to discard, showing this that only two of the cards in hand are non-lands. Max asks how huge Nadir is, and it's like 36, and Max then plays Protector of the Crown, becoming the Monarch as it enters. He then casts out a Miles Aria, and passes, drawing at the end of turn. Nick loses one life to get a fairy, and draws a card. He clamps it, drawing two, and pumping his commander. Nick then casts a marionette master, and fabricates the tokens instead of putting plus one plus one counters onto the master. Nick then moves the Lash Wraith onto the marionette master, and clamps a token. This lets him kill the protector with the master trigger, and it leaves Max wide open for the lethal swing that's coming his way from Nadir. Game review time, so I think we saw some pretty decent showings from Glenn and Keskid and Endear. Martin seemed to have a beautifully lined up hand for the early game, and he was able to get some ramp and card draw by attaching the Sword of Animus to Glenn, and it seemed to get him into a good position early on. Unfortunately with most Voltron decks though, as soon as you lose the creature that has everything equipped to, it can be very expensive to get that going again. While unfortunately it seemed like Nick's deck was slow to get going, once it did, it was firing on all cylinders. He was getting tons of tokens, and the Skull Clamp really helped him smooth out his draws, even though he did draw into a bunch of lands. I don't think any of us, Nick included, was expecting the deck to work as well as it did, and it was a happy surprise. 
This was the last game my Volrath deck played before I turned it into Ramos Mutate. Unfortunately, we're not going to see very much of it again, except for probably some old videos that I've got lying around. I do hope that Max keeps his Jared deck. I don't feel like we've really seen the full potential of it. It seems to be based around making his commander huge and then bashing face. And I always enjoy seeing those kind of decks go off. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.